artist and engineer, princess and scientist, musician and mathematician. When people first hear these words, they express wonder. Artist and engineer, those are usually on opposite sides of the spectrum. Last summer, my sister and I were walking along the pier, and we saw this energetic little girl running along the beach. Her t-shirt stood out to us. It said, forget princess. I want to be an astrophysicist. At first glance, we were like, heck yeah, girl power. But at the same time, we had this odd, nagging feeling. Why must a little girl have to choose between two things? Could a child not be both? Could children not love to play, dress up, be artsy, and love the sciences? As engineers, we can say from personal experience that engineering is not just about numbers and experiments. There is an art to being an engineer. So why is it that we try and push our children into one field or another? Why can't the little girl grow up loving arts, theater, and the tech fields? Why can't Asya love dressing up to be a princess and building bridges? Instead of following a binary system, we should be encouraging our younger generation to explore how subjects intersect. Because yes, the lines do blur, and that makes education all the more powerful. We need to find a way to harness this power through a comprehensive learning experience. Students shouldn't have to fit into one box or fit into one category, because yes, you can be an artist and an engineer. The two are not mutually exclusive. The idea of real, meaningful learning is something my sister and I have been exploring for years. It started off with us. We didn't love math and science in the classroom, but what we did enjoy was tinkering. We loved to build things and take stuff apart. Fast forward to the present, and we now live and breathe our passion for hands-on learning by running a company that focuses on K-12 STEM education. The word STEM, or science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, has picked up momentum in the last couple of years. This buzzword can now be heard throughout the country and world. Now, don't get us wrong. We definitely believe that STEM education is important. However, there are parts of this that we believe are being lost in this frenzy to get our kids coding and building. Consider the students that love music, art, history, and communication. If they have a passion for a certain field, how can STEM education apply to them? The easy answer is to simply say, well, tech is all around us. Or if you go into a STEM field, you'll get a better job. But take a closer look at the world. Yes, we live in a tech-driven generation. Yet there are aspects of business, engineering, design, humanities, all woven in together. So the real question becomes, why is STEM education meaningful? And how can it relate to a student, regardless of the field they pursue? We've worked with thousands of children across California, some as young as four years old and others graduating from high school. Throughout all ages, our focus and mission is consistent. It is not about creating engineers and programmers out of everyone. Instead, we want to get kids excited to learn, try new things, and develop an I-can-figure-it-out attitude. By encouraging them to design, build, code, and make mistakes, they are learning to be curious rather than apprehensive about the unknown. In our increasingly more tech-dependent, consumerist society, having a basic foundation of how things work is more vital than ever before. We wanted to share a quote from astrophysicist Carl Sagan. We've arranged a global civilization in which most crucial elements profoundly depend on science and technology. We have also arranged things so that almost no one understands science and technology. This is a prescription for disaster. We might get away with it for a while, but sooner or later, this combustible mixture of ignorance and power is going to blow up in our faces. Dr. Sagan's words are blunt, but truthful. We've set up our world in such a way that only a small percentage of people really understand it. It seems almost comical that people every day use technology in the forms of cell phones, cars, internet, electricity, without even considering the basic elements of how things work. And the reality is, tech is only going to become a larger part of our lives. So rather than push students into one category or another, we must find a way to help them find the intersections of STEM education. We must therefore shed our old system of learning to allow our children to thrive in the future. 
Let's take a look at the benefits of STEM education and its lasting impacts. One, a basic foundation of how things work. You don't have to be an expert in everything, but having a fundamental knowledge of how things work can only help. Two, the dreamers and creators. Inspiring the next inventors of our society to come up with scientific breakthroughs, more efficient technology, cleaner energy usage, and so much more. And three, the life skills. These are the skills that will stay with you for the rest of your life, no matter what. Critical thinking. Creativity. Confidence. The design process. <laughs> Attitude. And, and a, a lifelong life love for learning. learning. No matter what children grow up to become, these skills are transferable. These are life skills. This importance of meaningful, hands-on STEM education has taken us years to fully comprehend. We learned most of this through our own learn-by-doing process and interactions with our students. We thought we'd share a couple of our favorite standout discussions. The first one is about Michael, a fourth grader. Michael started with us two years ago, entering our center with an enthusiasm for cars and battle bots. Over the last couple of years, his interests have shifted from battle bots to 3D modeling to most recently, renewable energy. It started out with simple solar panel designs, but then expanded to include solar cars, wind turbines, and charging stations. It's <laughs> On the last day of his course, Michael asked, surprised me by asking, Miss Lavanya, can I please have two more days to work on this project? I have this idea and I really want to try it out. I had no idea what he was talking about, but within moments he had whipped out his engineering notebook and was telling me all about this detailed plan he had. Over the next couple of classes, Michael created his own unique motorcycle, powered using capacitors and a dual solar panel charging station. It's not every day that a fourth grader takes an idea and then decides he wants to make a renewable motorcycle vehicle. And now, every time Michael comes into class, he talks about his future company, one that will focus on environmentally friendly vehicle designs. This next story is one of our favorites. Stanley is just eight years old and he's ready to take on the world. He's currently learning to build robots using data wires, sensors, and renewable materials. He's currently working on a wind turbine, and I found him working hard to orient his wind turbine blades perfectly. So I brought out a protractor and I gave it to him, and I asked him what he thought it was. He didn't know, he'd never seen one before. We went back and forth for a bit until he found out what degrees were and how to measure them. At the end of the day, I read his summary, and it said, Today, I was stumped, and it was awesome. I didn't know what that piece was, but finally I learned about a protractor and angles. I can't wait to tell my mom I was stumped today. That attitude, the desire to learn even when the answer is unknown, the enthusiasm to be lost and celebrate that moment of confusion that then translates to confidence and joy at the moment of discovery. On top of all of that, Stanley, an eight-year-old, loves protractors and he knows how they can be useful in real life. These last couple of stories are a combination of some of the fabulous young women we've worked with. Victoria and Sophia, two sisters, used to come into our class every week carrying their favorite book, Harry Potter. When they first began robotics, all they could talk about was how they wanted to create something magical. The girls began an electronics class where they learned to light up LEDs, play sounds, and move motors, and they loved what they did. But at the same time, we're still trying to find a way to combine their passion for reading with their newfound tech skills. After a month of working on their final project, they showcased truly incredible creations. The Hufflepuff Cup and Hogwarts Castle. Both were programmed to light up in different colors and rotate using servos. Victoria and Sophia expanded their favorite series into a real and magical creation, one that combined technical skills with artistic design. Technology gave them the power to express themselves, but it was their love for literature that first inspired their entire design. Our final story is about a student who didn't originally want to be a student at our center at all. Talia is an artist who sketches and doodles at any chance she gets. 
She didn't like the idea of STEM anything, but ended up getting started with us because her two sisters were already there. After several sessions, Talia found that her preconceived notions of STEM were not all true. Her STEM activities weren't as scary or as hard or as boring as she, thought, as she thought they would be. With every class, Talia's confidence grows. She's currently learning to integrate her love for design into technology. This fifth grade girl now has taken her piano skills to the next level by integrating music with her own uniquely designed code. She's taking her drawing skills a step further by sketching out elaborate, beautiful circuits and then adding conductive materials to bring them to life. Talia embodies the artist and the engineer. The wonderful part is that Stanley, Talia, Michael, Victoria, and Sophia are not quite sure what they want to be when they grow up, but they are excited to pursue new projects and infuse STEM practices with their identity. And these are just a couple of the stories that we witness on a daily basis. These are the experiences that have led us to the roots of STEM education. The benefits of STEM ed are clear. Creativity, critical thinking, attitude. These are applicable to all careers, jobs, and every facet of life. STEM education is truly the roots of our society, but it's the branches that grow from hands-on education that allow us to dream bigger and be better. Imagine how these roots, when developed, can positively affect people in engineering, law, business, and politics. We must step away from this idea that STEM is meant to make engineers and coders out of everyone. Instead, broaden your perspective to consider how critical thinking and a confidence in this tech world can lead to greater inventions and collaborations among teams. Before we leave the stage, we'd like to leave you with this. Imagine a world where you aren't afraid to try new things and wander into uncharted territories. A world where you know how the technology around you works. A world where creative solutions and a positive attitude are not just valued, but expected. That's, That's the, the world, world we envision. envision. Thank, Thank you. you.